it's much easier if you need to make changes to your route. Good morning YouTube, it's Cruise Man. I am in Sweetwater, Texas. Just filling up with gas. I'm on my way back to Dallas-Fort Worth from Midland, Texas. I left this morning just before sunup. And uh, it was a really, really beautiful morning about 57 degrees when I left Midland it's about 63 now but it's starting to warm up a little bit but I don't expect it to get over about maybe 80 81 degrees today and I might even uh, be home before it gets that warm so just a really nice day today again clear skies just a little bit of wind, not too bad. And I gotta tell you, it was really interesting uh, being in uh, Midland. <laughs> you would never know that there was a pandemic because every place we drove by, all of the restaurants looked to be completely full. And I'll also give you my uh, mileage numbers for this trip uh, up in the uh, corner of the video so you can see kind of what my mileage uh, uh, was on this trip. Doesn't appear to be as good as I've had in the past. So I told you that I was going to be using the Honda GPS on this trip. And I was going to kind of give you a comparison between it and the uh, Garmin uh, XT that I have mounted to my Goldwing. So let me tell you a little bit of my thoughts about it just from this uh, one trip. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about how I'm using it. I created a route or created actually two routes, one from DFW to Midland and one from Midland to DFW. So I have two separate routes. And each one of these routes has about 12 waypoints. And I created the routes in Basecamp and I exported that route to a GPX file which I transferred to my Garmin XT right out of Basecamp. And then I also imported that GPX file into the Honda Trip Planner website uh, tool. The Honda Trip Planner does allow you to import a GPX file. I did not manipulate the file in Honda, G in Honda Trip Planner. And what I did is I just simply exported it right back out from Honda Trip Planner and then I imported that route into the Honda GPS. Now the reason for that is because the GPX file format that comes out of Basecamp is different than the GPX file format that comes out of the Honda Trip Planner website. And I'll show you those differences on the screen right now. And as you can see, there's a lot more information in the GPX file from Basecamp than there is in the GPX file from Honda Trip Planner. And apparently that additional information from Basecamp, if you simply imported that file into the Honda Trip Planner, uh, it gets confused. It simply just can't process that additional information and it just won't give you reliable results, or at least that's the way it worked with the original version I had of the Honda GPS. Now I do have the 2020 navigation update on my Goldwing. So I have the latest and greatest software on the Honda navigation. And when I imported my routes into the Honda GPS, they did appear to come in uh, pretty accurately. 
and in fact I have been pretty impressed with how good this GPS works now compared to what it worked when I first got the bike. Now there's still some, it's still not, it's not a Garmin, you know, it's not at that level, but I have to admit that the Honda navigation system built into the Goldwing, especially the 2020 update, is a is not a bad navigation system. It's not as bad as it was. It's better than it was. And it's, I would say, in 90% of the cases, it's an acceptable navigation system, even for multi-day long-distance travel. So Honda has made some improvements to the navigation system. I'm still not crazy about the graphics. I'm still not uh, crazy about some of the features, but uh, I was actually pretty impressed with some of the graphics. Some of the graphics are nice, like when you come up on an exit, it gives you a really nice graphic on the right side showing the uh, exit ramp and the sign and all that, so that's pretty impressive. The Garmin's advantage is it just has so many more features, it has so many more apps available to it that you could use, and it's much easier if you need to make changes to your route as you're riding down the highway. With the Honda navigation system, once you execute your route and you begin riding, there's really not much you can do other than zoom in or out on your route, on the map, and you can uh, delete a waypoint. Now, deleting a waypoint, while it's much different than what it is on the Garmin, it's still doable. If you hit the enter key on, the, on your uh, hand control, and bring up the menu on the GPS, you have to remember to use the up arrow. Only the up and down arrows control the cursor on the screen in the navigation. If you try to use the left or right dials or buttons, it will change your radio stations. <laughs> that takes a little getting used to, but basically hit enter to get to the menu and then you use the up and down uh, buttons to navigate between the various buttons. And then of course you press enter if you want to do something. So to delete a waypoint, you basically press delete waypoint and it will assume by default that you want to delete uh, the very most recent waypoint. So. It's not as elegant as the Garmin system, but it is usable. I would say it, it is uh, much better than I expected. There is one big advantage that the Honda navigation system has over the Garmin. And that is the audio instructions that come from the navigation. Now I've noticed comparing the two, you get a lot more audio instructions from the Honda navigation than you do from the Garmin. For some reason it interrupts you quite a bit to tell you different things. That may be good or bad, that's just a matter of personal taste. But the advantage with the Honda GPS is the interruption of your music source, if you're listening to satellite music or FM, AM, whatever you're listening to, it will mute the music to make the announcement and it recovers from that mute very quickly. So it's all being done internally in the navigation, I'm sorry, in the uh, Honda audio system. The Honda audio system is handling all of this muting of the other uh, audio source. 
and it does it very quickly and very crisply. With the Garmin GPS, you're basically relying on your Bluetooth headset because you have two Bluetooth sources. And when the Garmin GPS executes an audio uh, transmission, it will mute the first Bluetooth source, which is your Goldwing Audio. But it does not do so as crisply or as quickly as the Honda GPS. Because you're depending on the headset to do that muting and unmuting. So it takes it maybe an extra couple of seconds uh, after the Garmin stops talking to you. It takes a second or two for your audio to come back. So that's an advantage that Honda has. The big advantage that Garmin has is if I'm on a route as I am right now and I decide, man, I need to find fuel, I'm running out of gas, I can use the touch screen and I can have it very quickly route me to the next gas station or to the next Sonic drive-in or a restaurant. And I don't have to necessarily get out of the route that I'm in. With the Honda GPS, if I wanted right now to have it take me to the nearest gas station, I have to pull over, stop, you know, stop the bike, because it will not let me uh, go to the venues to do anything while the bike is going down the highway. I can't change my destination. So that would be the big advantage of the Garmin, is you can do things, even though, granted, in full disclosure, it's more dangerous to do that. It's certainly not safe to use the touch screen while you're driving. I want to emphasize that. So, bottom line is, I uh, think Honda has done a decent job with the updates. There's still some things they need to change. The Honda GPS is not as accurate as the Garmin. That's another big advantage to the Garmin. The Garmin is much more accurate with your waypoints and your destination. I'll give you an example. In fact, if you look at those GPX files, you'll notice that the longitude and latitude coming out of base camp is much more granular than the longitude and latitude that come from the Honda Trip Planner. You'll see many more digits to the right of the decimal. And I don't know enough about how a GPX file is structured, but I assume that means it's getting more granular and more close to the specific place you want to go. Somebody out there, if you know how that works, please put it in the comments. Am I correct on that or not? All I know is the same destination or waypoint on the Garmin, it will get you within 30 to 50 feet of that destination. The Honda Trip Planner will get you within about 300 to 500 feet of that destination. As an example, when I set the home location on the Honda GPS to my home in Carrollton, sitting in my driveway, and I say, set this as home, when I later set my home as the destination of a route, it shows me the address on the screen as being about two doors down from my house or about 500 feet from my house. It, it can't accurately pick my specific address or my house. It can only get me within about 500 feet. So anyway, I would uh, look forward to your comments and I know what a lot of people are gonna do. Anytime I talk about the GPS, a lot of people are gonna put comments in and say, well, why don't you just use Waze? Or why don't you just use Google, Google Maps uh, with Android Auto or CarPlay? And certainly that's fine. But if you are a touring 
motorcyclist and you like to go on multi-day tours and you like to plan out a route with specific waypoints or you want to take specific back roads um, you don't want to be on the interstate like I am today you want to say I want to take highway 115 or state highway or whatever it is you really it's very difficult to do that with something like Google Maps or Waze you, they're just not set up for that purpose they're designed to get you to somewhere you want to go as fast as possible so yeah if you're in a city and you and your wife are going to dinner and you're on your motorcycle and say hey show us where the Chinese restaurants are take us to the closest Chinese restaurant Waze or Google Maps is perfect for that you don't need a Garmin you don't need even the navigation system for that even though it would do that fine so a navigation system like the one from Honda and the one from Garmin are primarily the advantage is for multi-day or even a day trip where you want to go to specific places and you want to take specific roads so anyway that's about it for today I will uh, I appreciate you joining me and you know don't forget to check out our Facebook groups um, for Goldwing maintenance I'll put that information on the screen for you Thanks again for riding along with me on my road trip from Midland to Dallas and back. And I will see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.